Why did you execute a FIFA? Uh, he was retired. He was in his village. What did he do wrong? It might interest you to know that a FIFA was being provocative. And I had him locked up. I had him locked up. And uh, he wasn't feeling too good. So I said, oh, they should send him to the hospital. And after he recovered, I remember very well. And the gentleman who was keeping an eye on him was called Dennis. He was also in Achimoto School. One or two years, two years ahead of me. He was with intelligence machinery then that he had recovered. What do, he's okay now, what do we, I said, let him go home. And yet, later, had to be brought back. You see what I mean? Why? Uh, one evening, I don't know if it was the evening before the departures had to take place. I went You mean the to, executions? Correct. I went to see a respectable general <coughs> of ours. In fact, someone who just missed, you know, had a close, what you call it. He just escaped, you know, being, being hurt, also being killed on that June 4th day. A man whose life was saved, because I, I had, I held him in very high regard. So I went to show him the list. I was in a very heavy mood. I remember where he sat and I sat on, what do they call it, a couch. Those leather things people rest their yes. feet on. Yeah, leather pu yeah, puff. Correct. Mm -hmm. And looking away from him, and I'd given the list to him. And I was very, very heavy. I'm saying I couldn't hold back the tears because we had tried everything to prevent it. The executions of the commanders. And, um, and uh, yeah. After about two minutes or so, I heard him behind me ask, and where's the rogue? Where's the rogue? The rogue's name is not on the list. So, I mean, this uh, shocked me a little. And did you know who he was talking about? No, no. So I turned towards him expecting him to say who he meant by that rogue. Because here you are, trying to prevent a situation with such a list. For him to be asking to an additional name, a name that was also not on the list, uh, took me aback a little, you know. But uh, I turned towards him and looking towards him. And, um, yeah, so I was looking at him like, who, who, whose name is it? Who, who's the person? When he said, uh, Afrifa. General Afrifa. So, I'm still looking at him. Like, he, he will have to say more. And what did he say? He said a free for had been advanced a good load of money to wage a campaign against a Champong's union government. Yes, at that time, I mean, things were pretty hot. And instead of using that money for that purpose, the money, incidentally, you know, as he said, came from an establishment within an organization in in the West. I don't want to say the name now. And uh, yeah, 
And instead of using that money to wage that campaign against the Champong, he used it, according to the general, to edge out, what's his name? Mr. Pawili, who I believe was the leader of the UNC at that time. Correct. He edged out Pawili and took over the leadership of, of that party. I cannot recall, I wasn't too much into the politics of those days, but that's what he said. Whether it happened or not, I don't know. Oh, well, in politics, I guess, uh, I could be sinful enough, I guess. So I kept quiet, collected the list and went away and did what I had to do. So did he add the name? Or did he ask you to then add the name? It was obvious that uh, his name would have to be added. Okay. Because we would have to make some serious sacrifices. And the guiltier you are, the easier it could be. And here you had a list of innocent good people as well who would have to die to save hundreds. And this person was a general? Sure. Is he alive? <laughs> yes. Yes. Is he uh, still is he still your friend? Oh no 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 no. I you must have, you know, in a way I was a little naive also around that time. It wasn't until later that I saw through what he did. What he said could very well have been true. However, I think he wanted that man out of the way, out of the way, because he felt, you know, upstaged by General Frifa by virtue of the 66 coup. Until then, he thought he was a rising star, you know, the point man for Western intelligence organizations. And now, the 66 who haven't happened, I guess he's the one they are dealing with, and not him who he thought was more qualified. Mm. Mm. So, you, but you took his word then? Oh, I used to hold him in such high esteem. You know, uh, some other interest. On one occasion, I was sitting with a major friend of mine when we were discussing the move that had to be made, especially the one pertaining to dropping the bomb on a champong. And in my conversation with this major friend of mine, or was he a captain then? What did he say? No, I said, you know, a champong in a way had corrupted so many good officers and you know, pushed out some of the other good ones, the senior ones. So I was saying that this general, for instance, is one of the good ones who could be brought back if, if or when General Akufo takes over to assist him, you know, in terms of bringing on board efficient, disciplined people. He was one. And uh, this uh, captain friend of mine, just in the evening in his corridor, what did he say? No, we don't need such holier than thou characters. This shocked me a little because he belonged to a certain tribe, just like he did and I belong to also another tribe, but he said, no, we don't need such holier than thou characters. And I'm saying that I was shocked because when else, when again, could you need holier than thou characters? At this particular point in time, when so much had been corrupted, personalities corrupted, and we know the climate it's created, there are not many left. And here's a very competent person you could bring on board. And you're telling me, holier than thou. 
I mean, who's compromised himself? Mm. To such a point that you find a holier-than-thou character, you know, intimidating. Mm. What were you going to ask? So I was going to ask mm. whether this person, mm. is this still the general or this is another person? Oh, no, no, no. It's that same general. Same general. Mm. He's a survivor. <laughs> mm. He's a survivor. The number of attempts he made on my life. Yeah, and a few things. <laughs> read my book when it comes out. Okay, we're looking yeah, forward to it. Yeah, I hope you'll be alive to read it. Oof. No, I'll stop here. Okay. So, if I can conclude on that. Mm. So, if it wasn't for this general, mm. a free fire would not have been on the list. No. No, no. And so a free first name on the list was not your preference. No. I don't think... No, when we compiled the list, none of us had him in mind. I told you what had happened. He wasn't too well. You know, I had him detained and uh, sent to the hospital. When he recovered, I told Dennis to send him home. You know, a free fall. It was no part of it. But when you hold such a general in awe, you're just a young officer, you know, thrust into a situation like this, and people have to go, you know, and he tells you something like this. He would know. Yeah. And Do you it, it's not illogical. Right. Do you regret it? No comments yet.